Hello everyone and welcome back to Art à la carte and in this video I'm going to be doing a collaboration with a fellow YouTube artist named Kendall. I actually discovered Kendall's channel a few months back and was just blown away by her amazing illustrations and uh, paintings and pictures of food and plants and all that and oh so gorgeous. I even bought myself a little print which is fantastic. Strawberries are one of my favorite things so when I saw she had strawberries I had to get it going to definitely want to see her part of this collaboration video, which I am super excited about. So let me explain what we're going to do. In most collaboration videos that you do, you take a drawing or a theme of a drawing and either you both do part of it or you do your own version of it, but it has to do with with a certain topic. And we took that idea, but we went a little bit further with it. At least for me on my channel, I receive a ton of requests and questions about how to find your style in art, which can be really, really challenging to do. So Kendall and I decided to do a video where we both discuss our thoughts and ideas about producing a style. How do we get to a style? How do you find your style? So to help these two videos connect a little bit more into a collaboration, we decided to pick an animal and one photo from the animal and we would both draw the exact same thing. And then you could really see how our styles differ or are alike. This is the photo that we decided to go with, which is a cute little hedgehog. He's so cute and I'm really excited to draw him. So let's get started. Finding your own personal style. I think that is a question that every single artist at some point in their art journey has asked. I know it's something that I've asked other artists as I was beginning my art journey, and it's something that a lot of you guys have asked me. It's also a question that I don't believe has a solid answer. It's not something that I can say, do A, B, and C, and boom, you'll find your style. It's something that mm, the best way I can explain it would be very geeky and nerdy of me, but for those of you who have watched My Little Pony Friendship is Magic cartoon, the way the cutie crusader ponies are trying to find their cutie marks is very similar to finding a style. There's no set thing that you can do to force your style. It just comes naturally. And for those of you who did not get the My Little Pony reference, it's okay. Now with that said, this would be a really short video. So instead, I'm going to give you four points that helped me in the discovering of what my style was gonna look like. Before I get into that, let me just say I'm gonna be drawing this hedgehog several different times using several different styles to kind of illustrate that I actually don't really have a set style that I draw every single time. I have multiple styles, I guess. I do cartoony, I do more illustrated, I attempt to do realistic, but next to Kindle, no, I don't. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of uh, give it a, a little example of that. Okay, so let's get into the four points of style. Point number one, I believe is inspiration. I think every artist has a moment or a time where they find an artist or an art style that inspires them so greatly that they create art to imitate that. For me, it was Disney. I wanted to do everything Disney. I wanted to be a Disney animator. I wanted to eat, sleep, and breathe Disney. I watched every film. Everything I drew was Disney. My friends knew if they wanted me to draw something, it was going to have a Disney flair to it. And even today, if you look at some of my art, there is that Disney-esque feel to it um, because it had such an impact on my life. I know a lot of artists who go through that with, with anime or manga. They have a really strong phase or they'll pick a certain artist or a certain thing and they'll just draw the stew out of that. And that's not a bad thing. I think it's good to have an art hero. I, th I think it's good to have an art style that you want to achieve. I think that helps push you as a beginning artist. It teaches you a lot. I know drawing Disney art was something that taught me so much about art. So for me, it was, it was valuable. The bad side about this is if you stay there. If I had just stayed only drawing Ariel or Pocahontas or Belle or Sleeping Beauty and I didn't push on to something else and, and test myself, then that's where it becomes bad. So this brings us to point number two, which is practicing and getting comfortable as an artist. Now, practicing means not just drawing the same thing over and over and over again, but practicing things that maybe you're not so familiar to drawing with. So sitting around and drawing every single animal you can think of and drawing people and drawing people in different positions and drawing buildings and drawing cars and drawing scenery and getting to that point where someone can say, hey, can you draw this? And boom, you can draw it. That's the hard part. And this is the part that doesn't have a set amount of time. 
And I don't think this is ever a phase that you should ever truly move out of. Art is all about practicing and working hard. But this brings us to point number three, which breaks up the monotony, which is trying new things. And I talked a little bit about that in point number two, but also trying new things meaning trying different art mediums. So when I first began, I was strictly a pen and pencil paper kind of girl. Then I got into color pencils, then watercolor. I tried oils for about five seconds. I tried acrylic paint. I've done chalk pastel, charcoal. Anytime I can get my hands on any kind of new art medium out there, I want to try it. And this can be fun and it can also be very expensive. So let me just clarify saying to be a good artist, you don't have to own every single kind of art out there. But if the opportunity presents itself for you to try something out new, if you have a friend who says, hey, I just got some chalk pastels, you want to give it a try? do it. Try it out. Whenever there's an opportunity available to try out a new art supply, whether you see an art supply on sale and you have the money to buy anything, I'm going to try this out. Like I had never tried gouache out before. So I bought a really cheap and expensive batch of gouache so I could try it out. And I really like it. And now I'm going to save up and buy a nicer brand of it. I wanted to try watercolor pencils. I didn't have any. So I went out and bought a $5 set and they're really, really cheap. And I think, I don't know if I like them. (laughs) So maybe if I meet a friend who has a nice professional set, I'll try that out and see maybe it's the quality that I don't like, but I'm trying things out. And that opens up opportunities to test your skills and try something new, which then encourages you to draw something new, which then helps develop your style. So that brings us into the last point, which I've kind of already touched on, but I think it's so important that I wanted to make it its own individual point. And that is time. And the main thing I want to say about time in this point is there should never be a time in my art journey that my style stops developing. I never want to get to a point in my art journey where I say, oh, I found my style. This is, this is the Valerie Flynn style. Yeah, I have a style. If I draw something and people look at it, they, sh- you yeah, know, hopefully they'll be able to say, hey, yeah, I, I recognize that style. But in 10 years that when I draw something, it looks exactly the same as where I am drawing it now, because then I'm in a rut. I always want to be progressing my art, trying things new, practicing those out, putting all these points together, finding that inspiration for that new kind of art. Even today, I love looking online. I love looking at videos and finding new artists, like how I found Kendall. I saw her art online. I went, oh, that art is amazing. Does she have a gallery invented? Hey, she's a YouTuber. So I went and checked out her YouTube videos and thought, wow, what a great style because I'm not super great at realistic drawings. So it was really fun to watch her create those videos. So I go through Instagram. I love just looking at hashtags of things and finding out art and go, whoa, that style is amazing. I'm following that artist and just watching how they create things. So finding that inspiration, practicing, getting comfortable with my art, trying out new things and putting in the time and effort that I need. So all of those things put together are, I believe, will help you achieve and progress your art style. And everyone's art journey is going to be a little bit different because we're all put together. We're all created differently. We all see art and obtain art differently. Some people, it happens really fast. Some of us, it takes years and years and years of hard work. So don't get frustrated. Hopefully you have been encouraged by this, knowing that if you're having a hard time trying to find your style, that you're not alone. I encourage you guys in the comment section below, write your art story, your art journey, things you're struggling with or things that you've achieved and and accomplished. Maybe you have some suggestions on things people can do to find their art style. Put that in the comments. I know I get encouraged by reading your eyes' comments. I know a lot of other people that watch these videos really enjoy reading the comments as well. So your story really does matter to us. So please put that in the comments. Also, if you're brand new here, maybe you came over from Kendall's channel. Let me know that you're brand new. Say, hey, I'm from Kendall's channel on in there so we can get to know you. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. I post three new videos each week. If you haven't checked out Kendall's channel, head over there, check out her channel, hit that subscribe button. Get out there, practice, draw, create, have fun. Thank you guys so much for hanging out in this video. And until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.